In the last few videos, we've had some success trying to understand one layer attention only transformers. And so in this video, we're going to move on and try to study two layer attention only transformers. Now, this, this first video on that topic is going to just be about um, some theory that we need to build up to, to do that. Uh, but I think it is really quite worthwhile. Um, I found that the ideas that we can build up uh, studying two layer attention only models uh, really actually uh, give us some useful traction on thinking about transformers more generally. And we'll also, when we, when we in the, the video following this one, get to the point of actually, actually empirically studying what's going on inside these models, we'll find a bunch of things that seem to be really important mechanisms that exist in transformers of all sizes and uh, without any of the simplifications that we're, we're using right now. And so I think, I think it's pretty interesting to study these. So uh, recall that uh, in the, the previous videos, we developed uh, a pretty nice equation for describing transformers. We um, were able to go and describe them in terms of, well, first we have this direct path term that corresponds to this path here. And then we have these terms corresponding to attention heads, which correspond to all of these, these paths. And we found that there was a really nice uh, interpretation of both of these. That this could sort of be seen as being something like bigram statistics. And that this term here tells us if an attention head attends to a particular token, what is the effect on the logits? And this tells us, oh, uh, this tells us uh, where the attention head attends. So uh, that was pretty useful. And another way that we could write that is we could say, well, uh, we could put it sort of in a factored form. We could say, well, okay, the first thing you do is you, you multiply by WE, the so first to embed, then we apply the attention heads and there's the identity path as well. And then finally we do the unembedding. Okay. So once you've done that, it's pretty easy to, to generalize it to uh, a larger model um, or to a model with more attention layers. We're just gonna have multiple copies of this term basically. Now, uh, you might have noticed that every time uh, we talk about WO, it always comes with WV and vice versa. And every time we talk about WQ, it always comes with WK. And because these equations are going to get a little bit larger and more complicated, um, for simplicity, we're just going to introduce these terms WQK and WOV that correspond to uh, those products. So that's just a little bit of a little bit of cleanup um, before we move on to the, the equations. Okay, so um, here we have uh, our two-layer attention-only transformer. So we start by going and applying the embedding. So that's at the bottom here. Then we're going to go and talk about the first attention block. So that's, that's all of this. And within that, we have the identity term that corresponds to, to this path, and then all of these attention head terms that correspond to these paths. And then we have the, the second layer attention heads. And then finally, we have our good old unembedding. Now, uh, we'd actually, even though this is sort of a, an easy way to, to go and describe it, um, we'd like to expand this, because expanding it will give us, uh, I think, a more helpful, helpful way to think about the actual mechanics of the system. Um, and we're going to take advantage of this really nice property. We sort of implicitly talked about it earlier, um, that uh, uh, when we have tensor products, um, and if, if you're not comfortable with tensor products, um, make sure you watch the, the video on the theory of one layer um, attention heads, where we talk about these a little bit more. But um, when we have tensor products like this, uh, the items on, on one side of the tensor product, and we multiply them, the items on one side of the tensor product multiply together. Um, and similarly, the ones on, on the left-hand side end up going together as well. This is called the, the mixed product identity. And it's really actually the whole reason why I decided to frame uh, this series in terms of, of tensor products. Um, and in, in the case of attention heads in particular, there's a really beautiful interpretation of this, which is that if you change, 
really we're, we're only going to do this when, when these are attention heads and we're, we're multiplying them together. So if you chain two attention heads together, the attention patterns combine and create a new attention pattern. And the matrices that describe where the attention head is reading from and writing to also multiply together. And, and you get something that looks very much like an attention head. So that's the reason we care about that. OK, so now we can write the expanded form of that equation. So we have um, first, uh, well, we're going to have sort of three types of terms. So we have the direct path term. Um, and this is, we've, we've seen this term all the way back to our zero layer transformer. Um, it's a good old friend, and it just corresponds to this direct path down uh, the transformer. And it tends to represent bigram-ish statistics. Some of the bigram statistics will start to migrate into attention heads, but um, the kinds of things that it represents are, are similar to bigram statistics. Then we'll have uh, terms that correspond to going through a single attention head. And that could go through an attention head in the second layer, or could also go through an attention head in the first layer. So these are the effects of attention heads. And then finally, we have what I'm going to call virtual attention heads. So virtual attention heads are when you have two attention heads, the composition of two attention heads. And that has also has some effect on the output. And, and so virtual attention heads have this nice property that they're, um, they have, yeah, they're, we just get them through the, uh, the mixed product identity that we were talking about earlier. So we, we get this attention pattern, they have an attention pattern of their own, which is the product of the two attention patterns. And they have um, a OV circuit of their own that describes if they attend to a particular token, what the effect will be. And it's just the product of the, the, the first OV circuit and the, the second OV circuit, or the, the OV matrices at least. Um, oh, so that's what, we, that's what we had. Okay, so a question you might um, well, okay, stepping back for a second, I think one of the things that's really cool about this is it really allows us to study attention heads in a principled way. So I think a lot of the time, um, there's been a lot of papers that I think are, they're, they're genuinely super cool papers um, where people go and study uh, attention patterns and they, they're like, you know, we found an attention head that appears to attend from this to this and maybe like it attends to the subject of the, of the sentence or something like this, or if it's a verb, it attends to the subject or something like that. Um, but it's, it's actually pretty tricky to know, well, there's, there's sort of a conceptual problem, which is it's very tricky to think about attention heads in isolation. They could be, um, the attention heads could be reading information for other attention heads. Um, and they could be, you know, they, so they, you know, it might appear that an attention head attends to one token and moves it from, and, and, and goes to a second token, but it could be that the, the information it's reading from that residual stream actually came from an attention head that was yet earlier and that the attention head, it, the information it moves and writes, that that attention, that information doesn't, doesn't sort of, that isn't its final destination, it yet moves on further. Uh, and so th it's very easy to be, um, I think potentially to, to be confused about this or at least to worry that you might be being confused about this. Um, and it seems to me that uh, at least for the attention only case, this framework, uh, resolves that because uh, if if it was the case that uh, the important thing was was these chains attention heads, then those would be the virtual attention heads, and and that would resolve all of these cons you know that and and the 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 individual attention head terms would sort of end up being small, and uh, and that would that would completely resolve it. So uh, that made me really happy because I've a thing that I felt very uncomfortable that when I've when I've seen people talking about transform interpretability for, for a long time has been this concern about uh, chains of attention heads and whether, whether attention patterns are really important or whether they're just sort of illusions um, that are, are parts of a much longer chain and that we're missing the whole story. Um, and it, it feels really good to have, have a framework that puts us on, on steady ground with respect to that concern. Okay. Um, so in our, in our next video, we'll be able to go and actually start studying these.